Hi everyone, Dr. Kaliko here, and I promised you a video in which I would discuss both the Sputnik vaccine as well as the CoronaVac vaccine. So um, to start off, the Sputnik vaccine, this is the one developed by Gamaleya in Russia. Uh, they recently published their phase three clinical trial results in The Lancet, which is a peer-reviewed medical journal. And uh, this vaccine is currently available in Russia and um, either currently or soon to be available in India, Nepal, Egypt, Iran, Latin America, and many other countries. So based on these published results, these are interim results, meaning it's kind of like a sneak preview. So they've published some results ahead of time, but there's more to come. So they included 20,000 adults in these clinical trials, and it's a two-dose regimen. So these results, these interim results, are reflecting the effectiveness after the first dose. So what they've found is that the uh, Sputnik vaccine is 92% effective in preventing symptomatic COVID disease. And it's 100% effective at preventing moderate to severe COVID disease. So that's great news. Uh, also, they included over 2,000 adults who were over the age of 60 and the effectiveness in this group of elders was 92%. So that's also good news for the segment of our population that is most vulnerable to severe COVID-19 disease. So we expect to see more results probably um, after that second dose in future publications. Overall, the vaccine appeared to be well tolerated. The most common side effects were flu-like symptoms and pain at the injection site, so very similar to the other vaccines that we've discussed in previous videos. There were no deaths or serious side effects that were attributed to the vaccine. So this was monitored by an independent safety monitoring committee. This means these are scientists who are not employed by the pharmaceutical company that is sponsoring the trial. Uh, and they've determined none of the, the serious events were attributed to the vaccine. So one of the main limitations of this particular trial is that all of the patients who were enrolled happen to be based out of Moscow. So big city, that means we don't know how generalizable the results might be to people who would be living in more rural areas, for example. Uh, also, the trial population was 99% white. So again, limited generalizability to people of color. Uh, but overall, that's what we know about the Sputnik vaccine. Now, uh, on the CoronaVac vaccine, so this is the one developed by Sinovac based in China. Uh, this one's available in China, Brazil, Turkey, and several other countries. And uh, on this vaccine, we have only press release data. We have not seen any full published uh, phase three clinical trial results in a peer reviewed medical journal yet. And what we know based on the press releases is that they included 25,000 participants in Brazil, Turkey, Indonesia, and Chile. And this is also a two-dose regimen. So the effectiveness of this vaccine ranges anywhere from 50% in Brazil to 91% in Turkey. And we're not clear on how exactly that primary endpoint was defined, whether that's symptomatic COVID, like most of the other trials, uh, or something else. Uh, so I hope to see you know, more detailed results published in a peer-reviewed journal. Uh, it does appear to be tolerated, well tolerated from a safety standpoint as well. Uh, but yeah, again, if we, um, unless, until we see the full results in a medical journal, it really is difficult to be able to make apples to apples fair comparisons uh, between this vaccine and the other manufacturers. So the other point I want to address is some of the rhetoric that I've been reading in the news and hearing in the news and social media about maybe some mistrust that people have about the vaccines that have been developed by uh, Sinovac and Gamalea. And I want to make a point that it's really important for us to distinguish between the pharmaceutical companies, the, um, the government policies of these countries, and the people who are from these countries. So those are all different things. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I'm going to give you one example of a news article I read in NPR 
where they interviewed a vaccine researcher uh, based out of the US and he's talking about the Sinovac vaccine. And he says, it's science by press release. The Chinese are being well, characteristically less than transparent. Can you see what's wrong with that statement right there? So what he's doing is overgeneralizing um, you know, the, the opacity maybe, or the, um, the fact that we haven't seen full clinical trial results, he's generalizing that to the Chinese people. So there's a problem with that um, because when you start to blur those lines between the people who live in a country and maybe the government regime that's in control at a, any given moment, or, um, you know, you start to really perpetuate these racist and xenophobic stereotypes. So it's fair to criticize government policies. It's fair to criticize pharmaceutical companies when they're not sharing detailed data that they could be sharing or maybe should be sharing with the public. But what we don't do is overgeneralize that to the people. So I just wanna make that point clear. So that's it for this video, and in a future video, what I'm going to do is take you behind the scenes to show you what goes on in preparation for a mass vaccination clinic. So stay tuned for that, and if you want to be notified when that video is available, be sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks.